Hello and a very warm welcome to the sound tutorial. In this um, episode I talk about level gain staging a little bit, pre and post fading and um, about k-metering that is uh, from a guy named Bob Katz uh, who is a very famous audio engineer and wrote some very important books about that topic. But um, yeah, let's get started. <laughs> So um, this tutorial is not about um, only Bitwig, it's about um, every DAW uh, that is out there because in every DAW you have those faders over here. And um, most DAWs have a, a default setting for those um, uh, faders and in Bitwig it is um, minus 10 dB. And um, that has a reason or that should have a reason when you are using um, that fader setting because um, when I started um, to use um, DAWs I wasn't aware what that means. Um, I heard in, in several tutorials and read in, in several books yeah okay you have that fader setting and then you can adjust the volume and everything. Later I learned, okay, don't uh, touch that fader because um, if you're changing the, the volume, just do it um, over here in, in your device chain with a tool or utility or whatever the name of this tool um, is in your DAW and adjust um, the volume over here. So uh, don't uh, automate, for example, this one, just automate with this one. And uh, at one day I, I recognized that this setting has a different meaning than just yeah, adjust the volume somewhere because um, the default setting is of those faders you could define that as a standard level as your, as your maximum point where your peaks are going. So normally um, in, in the digital world you have uh, 0 dBFS as the maximum before it starts to clip. And then you get distortion, um, the sound is changing and everything sounds different. And um, when you um, produce in, in your DAW and you have only one track over here, there's no problem just to use it on minus 10 dBFS or on 0 dBFS or whatever your, your setting is because um, there's no compli complication or other sounds coming in. But if you have more than one track, so let's say 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 or whatever, um, sound uh, adds up. So um, everything you play over here gets down to the master channel, to stereo channel. And in worst case, everything is adding up. So if you, for example, use that minus, uh, minus uh, 10 dB or 0 dB and everything is hitting at the same time, maybe you get plus 40 dB or something. I don't know. Or maybe plus 10 or, or it gets over 0 or something like that. So this is something everybody is a little bit aware of it. But um, this minus... 10 dB has um, another meaning than just, yeah, okay, let's go the safe way. And um, um, if everything gets up, it's up, it's less, um, um, it's less possible. No, it's less possible that you uh, go over um, zero d uh, dBFS. So there's something different because if you're producing for a loud genre like uh, electronic music or something and you're using this, sorry, I'm clicking here around and you're using this minus uh, 10 uh, dBFS and you say, okay, I don't touch this because my, all my automation goes with the tool or utility or everything else, but I want to have this, this sound or the kick drum very loud. So at the moment it's like that. And you say, okay, that sounds nice, but I don't want nice, I want a bad sound. I want loud sound, I want it really hard and loud. Then you go like, okay, I can um, I can amp the sound, for example, over here, make it louder. Okay, then I end up with a minus, let's say minus one, but uh, you notice the sound changed a little bit. 
don't mean the crackers, that's the problem of my of my computer, but instead of the default. I'm sorry for the crackers, I don't know. So this changes a little bit. Not that much, not that you can hear it very clear. And if you're producing something and there are some other instruments playing at the same time, maybe you notice nothing. But there's something because um, this minus zero 10 dBFS is the theoretical zero level. Um, you lowered your volume 10 dB to just say, I'm playing or mixing against this level. This is the meaning in this kind of philosophy for this level. Setting this level means you are playing against minus 10 dBFS and this minus 10 dBFS over here in the in the info bar, <laughs> I can show it over here, um, in this info bar is your maximum level for your instrument. And if you start to um, boost your instrument, so you leave it at minus 10 dBFS, but you want to reach zero um, dBFS, you have to boost your instrument. And in, in this example, you saw I'm still below um, zero dBFS and sound change a little bit but maybe not that noticeable but um, your DAW is working internally with a higher sample rate so normally every DAW works with a 32-bit floating point and some of uh, some of the DAWs working with a 64-bit floating point but at the end of your production you have to export it to 16-bit and a 16-bit dither normally to put it somewhere um, on, on, a, on a platform or on a CD or a vinyl or, or something else. So and at this point, you lose the possibilities of all these high sample rates because um, the higher the sample rate, the louder you can go with your, with your sound. Um, so I think 16-bit is about... I, I'm not really sure. Maybe you write in the comment down there. It's about uh, 96 decibel, and uh, if you, when you have 24 um, bit, it goes even higher. And 32 is really high, uh, high volume. So at the moment, I have um, this this instrument. I have this level of minus uh, 10 dB, but I overdriven this this instrument. But I can't hear it because my DAW, like Bitwig at at the moment is so good um, it works with a 32-bit floating point but you start to hear it when you start to put that in audio file so i use right normally like 24-bit but i i do all the the conversions right now i use 16-bit let's say let's say use it with dither and pre 16 and dither Maybe write it right. Dither. Okay, that's the green one. Then I bounce it with 24 bit pre fader. It's pre 24. No dither. Let's do without dither. And let's do that like bubble like. I don't know. And then bounce it again with 32-bit floating point, no dither. This is pre-32. And because we're doing everything pre, let's do it post fader 24. This for another. This is oops, this is post 24 and some more colors. Come on like this and the post is getting this for example and i put the post down here i, I need it later so 16 bit 
24 and 32. So if I start to compare this, this is my original. So now I go to the, oh, I forgot which is the dither, but you will hear it, I think. Okay, now I go to the um, 32. I think this is what the, was the dither. I'm not really sure. Okay, I go to the 32, then 24, then 24 dither, and then 16-bit dither. Sounds a little bit different, slightly, but not that much. Okay, next one. Sorry, this was post, not pre. So again, this one. So you notice the 16 and the 24 um, bit sample rate uh, isn't enough to just uh, um, hold all that uh, loudness in there, the whole, the whole uh, yeah, decibels in there. So it starts to distort, distorting and the sound changes uh, dramatically. So the only way to keep it is to keep it on a 32 sample bit rate. But um, all the, the, the end clients, the, all the apps and, and devices that are out there, like smartphones and everything, normally don't get the 32 sample. You normally just send out the 16-bit sample. So everything you produce should be um, available for 16-bit. And in this example, I just uh, converted um, the sound to a 16-bit WAV file. And it will change dramatically again if you put it in an MP3 or some other um, psychoacoustic um, format. So this could be very, very dangerous. So in in this example, it's like, okay, I used a minus 10 dB FS level, but I was overdriving my instrument. I get to the so I get to the zero level. And this is completely useless to do that because if you're going for loudness you don't have to go for loudness in the beginning of your of your project you have to if you want to get very very loud with your whole track see that all your instruments have the same level or that um, uh, uh, that you produce in a way that you get the the the, the highest or the most loudness that you want to reach in this level that you that you set your fader your your track fader so you you can see if you are loud enough if uh, all your peaks and everything or the rms is hitting your uh, level settings nearly and at the end when you master your file when you give it away to a master studio studio they can put it to the loudest level you ever heard or something you know because if you start to overdrive your levels or go over your levels with only part of your instruments, um, you're destroying your own mix with that. And um, if you want to produce very loud from the beginning on, then set your level on zero dBFS, set to the loudest uh, level you, you can set. But keep that always in mind that this is the zero dBFS. And when you, when you produce your tracks, you should always be aware that sound is summing up so that in your master you, you um, clip very quick. You get a, um, a change in, in the sound, in the timbre of the sound, in the color of the sound. And um, if you don't want that, you should be always aware about um, these level settings and your gain staging. So this is the most important thing to have in mind when producing something your level that you set on and at the end if it's if you you could you could produce as well on minus 20 dbfs 
You know, if all your tracks are hitting the minus 20 dBFS, you always can put on the on the master one, two or 20 uh, tools or utilities or whatever to boost the sound. So you get to zero of F at, at the end, but you don't have to produce in that very loud um, way. You, you just have to make sure that everything um, or that that you um, produce every sound uh, and every every instrument you use you produce against that level that is um, predefined from the DAW or that you predefined so that's very important to know and as I said um, I did it in, in the beginning as well that I didn't think about that all those faders and the faders only like setting the volume up and down and automating it oh no don't automate it and everything until um, I figured it out that this setting is more important for mixing and, and um, uh, reaching a target level than automate a volume or something. And um, that, that is something I wanted to tell you for a long time um, because I saw that a lot of times too and um, I explained um, people um, not just to to shift their minds what this fader is doing for them or what, why how they should use it there may be some other philosophies about that um, I'm sure about that but this is one of the philosophies um, I figured out and um, this makes so much sense because as I as I showed you over here if you start um, overdriving um, your instruments um, is, that has not really good effect on on your sound at the end and you're always wondering why is my sound so distorted i don't know because i'm producing everything clean and everything that's why that's because um your daw is working on 32-bit floating point and at the end you export a 16-bit uh, dithered uh, wave file that you convert to um, mp3 or some other audio files or format so that's the big topic over on on this um, tutorial and then you have the whole pre and post fader um, settings that are mostly used or mostly explained with um, send orgs or effect channels and then bitwig is something um, you can you can define, for example, your instrument over here. You set up an um, effect channel with, for example, a reverb. And then you have this knob over here where you can set the level of signal you send from this channel over to this effect channel. And you can f send the full loudness over here or a little bit less or whatever. And there's another setting. And normally this is on auto. And auto means uses the fx tracks pre-fader settings so in in this case it uses always the pre-fader settings and you can set it directly on pre-fader settings so everything that comes out in this device chain in this loudness of the device chain will be sent to the reverb channel with this setting so the the uh, loudness of, of this device, for example, or if you have some uh, effects over here, is sent directly to this um, effect channel or send or aux channel. So, and um, because it's pre-fader, this fader doesn't have any effect on the signal. If you set it to post-fader, so all the signal, all the loudness that is coming out of this device chain will go through the fader and the, the loudness level after the fader will be sent into the effect channel. So with post fader, if I put it here very silent, very only a little signal comes to the um, reverb channel if i put the fader over here very loud a lot of signal is going to the reverb channel for example but um, like i said how i use these faders it doesn't make any difference in my way of working like this 
And um, I'm always happy just to use, for example, this, and I mostly leave it on here on auto because it doesn't make in my way or in my workflow, doesn't make any difference. So I just um, select the loudness over here. And if I change something in, in my um, device, for example, if I make it um, a quieter or louder or something, it automatically only sends the output of the device in here. So if my device gets um, far quieter, it sends um, the quieter level just to the reverb and I may have to um, adjust that over here or just leave it like it is because I don't want to have so much effect on a quieter um, device or something like that. So that is the pre and post fader classic setting, let me say. So we have the level setting and what it means to set a level. So um, you have the your, your theoretically zero level for your level setting where you mix and produce against that. If you set it to minus 10 to minus 8.543 or directly on zero dBFS, that's totally fine. Uh, you can do anything you want if you know what you are doing. And you always have to keep that in mind when you are producing as well for the um, export, as well for the, for the master, for clipping and, and so on, or for buses and so on. So, and uh, the third topic of this tutorial is the key metering is just to round up the whole topic because um, the, uh, the K metering, I'm sorry, the K metering uh, that comes from Bob Cutts, a very, um, you know, let's say famous uh, audio engineer that uh, wrote, who wrote some um, important books. And there's a book I will uh, put in the description as well that is, I find it's very, uh, very great and, and very important uh, to read it from time to time because he explains a lot and there's a lot of experience in, in this uh, book. And I love when people put experience in books because you can learn so much from that. And um, Bob Katz um, said in this whole uh, loudness war that was going on from the 70s up to the, I don't know, late 2000s or something, um, this is completely insane and it doesn't make sense. So he defined some some levels where he said, okay, this is something I, I want to produce against that. And one of the levels is the K12. This is um, minus 12 dBFS. And this is a, um, a level where, where that should be used for broadcast and radio. Um, so uh, if you... If you're producing for some broadcasting or radio stations, just produce against this level or put that level down there. And then there is a um, K minus 14 and the minus 14 says minus 14 dBFS from zero dBFS. And this should be for uh, music like country, rock or mainstream pop or something like that. And then there is um, a level called K20 and this is minus 20 dBFS, and this is used for film, classic uh, uh, music, and some special hi-fi um, um, applications, something in, in this. Uh, and you may notice that when you're watching TV and when you're uh, uh, watching movies, especially from from uh, DVDs or Blu-rays or like streaming services and you listened uh, before that to music that all the movies are quieter than your music. And this is always because they are mixed again a lower level for that. And uh, this um, has some advantages because you can use a higher dynamic because if you're, if you're mixing against minus 20 dBFS you can go very loud for, for a short time of period and um, the, all the other time you are really quite so an, an impact uh, in a movie is much more impressive if you have 20 dBFS left in uh, uh, 20 dB left to minor uh, to uh, zero dBFS instead of you have only like five <laughs> or something so that's that's the whole roundup that that there is for the for the level and that you if you not already heard about that you heard about the pop 
Bob Cutts metering or the K metering, um, what that means and uh, um, yeah, um, why why it is there and uh, maybe one last thing thing um, because of all those metering is um, not only Bob Cutts thought about that having having a level out there. Um, in I don't know in the 2000s somewhere um, they defined something like the Lufs and you all heard about the Lufs and the Lufs is something similar where you say okay um, in, in some amount of time uh, you have to have a certain level uh, like minus 8, minus 12, minus 14 or something for music and you know that when you are producing new music for different, uh, for example, uh, streaming services or for CD or for vinyl, you have to have some loose, not only for technical reasons, but also for some uh, reasons for consumer, because it's very annoying and sometimes it hurts very hard if you are listening to some music and it's very quiet music. And uh, you turned up your volume and then another track is starting and your ears start bleeding in, in seconds or something. This is not really um, nice. So that's that's the reason or that's the story behind all those metering like K-metering and loves metering and um, as well... Uh, not not only the these uh, standard settings for your in your DRW. So I hope you liked that video. I hope you, I hope uh, I could open your eyes for that thingy like um, setting a default level and using that level and not fighting against this level because fighting against that level means you're fighting against yourself and destroying your sound. And I don't think you want to do that. If you want to do that, that's fine. As I said, you can do anything if you want. And if you know what you're doing, that's everything fine. So um, I hope I see you soon again. Stay healthy. If you like that video, then I would ask you to do that for me. Because I like to hear from you and write me in the comments. If I forgot something, please write it in the comments. If you have a question, ask in the comments. Uh, if I know that, I will answer you. Um, I'm always happy to hear from you. And yeah, so as I said, stay healthy. See you soon. Ciao, ciao.